Hey, Rudder Nation. I hope you're having a great summer. I'm Jerry, your host of this show. And I just want to give you a quick update because a lot of folks have been asking, are you doing okay? You haven't done an episode in the last two and a half weeks. Are we getting a new episode? What's happening? Are you okay? And for those who've reached out, thank you so much for that. Uh, it's good to know that I have friends out there who are concerned for me if I've not published on time. And and, and that's understandable because this show has been around since August 2015. And during that time span, we never really went more than a week or two without publishing an episode. In fact, in 2023, I was bringing it almost two a week. So what's going on? Is the show folding? No, the show is not folding. I've just been really swamped, very busy. Uh, and here's a quick update. So this is more of like just a personal story of what's happening in my life. Maybe this will help you. Maybe it just keeps you in touch with me. Either way, that's what you get on this episode. So none of the fanfare, none of the typical opening, how this show is about. Well, heck, if you're still here. <laughs> for those who are new here, uh, come back for the next episode or listen to the older episodes. So this show is about helping people who feel stuck in a rut, whether that's in their faith journey, their family life, their fitness, their finances or just who they're trying to become in the future. This show aims at sharing encouraging stories, practical advice to help you identify the rut. What is the source of that rut? What are you going to do about it? That's it. It's geared at Christian men, 35 to 45. They're married. They've got kids. They've got all the boxes checked for what success should look like. But deep down inside, something has crept in. Something that has made them feel they're not really living the life that they were intended to live, that they want to live, there's a misalignment between what success is for them and the path they're on. Now, is that universal to everybody? Yes. So, can anybody listen? <laughs> That's what's happening right now. The actual audience of the show is a swath of, I think it's 50 50 men and women from all walks of life. Not even everybody's a Christian. And that's a okay. You're all invited to listen in because if you get something out of this and you make your life better, I'm glad to be a part of that journey. I mean, you're doing the work, but I get to be a part of that journey. And that's so cool. So what's going on with me? Where have I been? Why is it it's been now almost three weeks of no new episodes? Well, man, where do I start? Um, so a lot of you know, I left my corporate job at the end of 2022. And some of you know the, the reasons and the story behind it, the just the, the pain I went through to make that decision to leave that corporate career uh, as it was climbing a ladder. And, and it was a realization for me at a time when I was writing the book for this show, Beyond the Rut, Create a Life Worth Living in Your Faith, Family, and Career. I realized, holy cow, Jerry, you're in the rut. What are you going to do about it? And so my wife and I talked about it and we stepped away from that career. And it was a nice career. I'm talking six-figure salary. It was a nice position. It was on an upward trajectory. Got to be involved in a lot of great um, projects that were good feathers in my cap. And I got to lead some really great people in an organization that does great work. So all good things. Yet, for me on the inside, it was not so good. And on top of that, it was keeping me from some other goals in my life. So I stepped away from the job. It was meant to be a temporary thing. Three months, I go back into the job market. What happened instead was I decided to launch a business. And that was just something on my bucket list. You know, I'd, I want to be an entrepreneur. I personally don't see my success as somebody who has to have a seven-figure income a net worth that is going to put me in Fortune magazine. Those things don't really matter to me. Do I want freedom? Yes. And something I've learned is that I don't have to make a seven-figure income or have an office with a view or have a big job title to have that kind of freedom. And the type of freedom I'm talking about is a combination of time freedom and geographic freedom. So to go where I want to go with my family whenever we want, to spend the time we want, to have that kind of freedom. And the reality was, where I was and why I was feeling stuck in my life was because I was nowhere near that kind of freedom. So, 
2023, instead of going to find a new job, a new corporate gig, I launch a business called BTR Impact. And it's kind of a two-sided coin. On the one side of the coin, it's all things that are the business aspect of this podcast, book sales, public speaking, that kind of thing. And on the flip side, as I was building momentum for my book, I tapped into my 15-year career doing leadership development, leadership training, communication training, and decided this business is also going to be a leadership development consulting firm. Let's build something around there. And so while I was building momentum for Beyond the Rut, the book, the speaking, and all that, I, I do like a pivot. And so in May of 2023, I design the tent framework for servant leadership. And I start pitching that. And it wasn't until towards the end of the year I started feeling and wondering, if I started from scratch, because other than the people who know me from my career in healthcare, nobody really knows me for leadership development. They see me and they think of me as the podcast guy, the guy with the cool microphone who loves to say hello to us and make us feel good about ourselves and just gives me some hope for the day. That's what a lot of people know me for in the space outside of that particular career. Yet here I am starting from scratch, wondering why I'm only getting a few gigs here and there. And then I do a Hail Mary at the beginning of 2024 because, you know, we were living off of savings. And this is kind of a cool thing, you know, talking about finding success in your faith, family, fi uh, fitness, finances, and future possibility. We had some success in the financial arena where we had six months of living expenses that stretched out for a year and three months. To me, that is phenomenal. That is a blessing. And that was a combination of tapping into the savings reserves, but also picking up a few gigs here and there that helped stretch that out even more. And then I, I qualify for some VA benefits, so that also helped. So we had some things that augmented the savings. So six months of living expenses stretched out for a year and three months. That is huge. Not everybody has that. So January comes around, we realize we are out of money, and it's going to take me probably three to six months to find another job back in what I was doing. So that was a real consideration. Plugging back into the matrix, getting a corporate job, getting that nine to five, and then regrouping, rebuilding the savings. And what will the next exit strategy be like? Will it be another five years, six years, 10 years? We don't know but what will the next step look like? So there would be another attempt, another breakout, if you will. But the reality, again, we're out of money. We need work. And it's like, it's going to take me three to six months to find a real job, like an actual job. So that's not really viable for what we need in the moment. This is January. And so then I look at my wife and I'm like, well, our daughter makes a ton of money as a bartender. And my wife lets me know I am nowhere near as pretty as my, our daughter. So I probably won't pull the tips. She does. Facts. Uh, <laughs> plus, I'm not that good at pouring drinks. Weird, right? Um, so that wasn't an option, but we, we thought about waiting tables, hard work. We wanted flexibility because I'm still trying to build this business. And so then rideshare comes along. It's like drive for Lyft. Okay, drive for Uber. Great. How much do you really make off of that? Okay, now... A lot of people just get in their car and they drive, but we got some reality we got to look at. We got to look at gas cost, wear and tear on the car. What are we willing to accept as a true cost of doing this business, this work for ourselves out of our car kind of thing? And then I started to realize there are people out there that earn an actual living, uh, 75000 a year or more gross. So how do they do it? If everybody else is earning on average $15, $16 an hour, how are people out there getting $30, $40, $50 an hour in various markets? And so while I'm driving for Lyft and Uber, by the way, I'm studying these guys. YouTube is great, by the way. <laughs> you can learn just about anything, but you got to have some critical media literacy because you got to figure out who are the guys that are really giving you some knowledge bombs and some strategies versus the guys who just want to get views because their real income isn't from driving rideshare. Their real income it's from having a monetized YouTube channel and merch. So you got you to gotta kind of sift through that, like who's who. And I found a couple of people I could trust that 
give me kind of the broad what's happening in the market of Rideshare. But then there's this one guy, RideXShare is his channel name, and he actually does a ride along and shows us how he cherry picks the best rides to earn roughly $250 a day on up to $300 a day. And so I started applying his strategy and it started working for us. And I was like, wow, we went from survival mode to we could probably do this for a few years if my body holds out. Now I've come to realize, no, I need an exit strategy um, because I mean, we can do it. We've got the flexibility. And that was the realization was that this was something that was really relatively low hanging fruit, you know, driving for these guys, low hanging fruit. Since January, it's now what, July 2024, I've done over 1,600 rides in my car, and I've got a pretty good system down where I could take a day or two off during the week, I get to choose which day of the week that is, and then I also get to choose my hours. Like, hey, there's some cool bonuses happening today, why don't I just start at 5 in the morning, finish at 5 or 6 in the evening, take some breaks in between, go to lunch with my wife, all those things and still make our goal for the day, and then now we've got the evening together. Or, I start in the afternoon and go until midnight, come home, get a good night's rest, and then I work on the newest adventure. So that's where we are now. What the heck have I been up to? What's been keeping me busy? Because during the daytime, when I was just kind of on my own, I was using that time to produce Beyond the Rut, the podcast. Now, I was also trying to get this leadership development consulting business going. And then again, the goal being time mobility or time freedom and geographic freedom. And then just the time I had available. I was like, what do I really like doing? You know, the, the leadership development side of the business came from what were the things about my previous two jobs that I really loved the most? And that was facilitating training and doing public speaking. Those were the top two things I really loved. But it takes a lot of effort to do the marketing behind that. And I was just like, man, there's a lot of competition out there too. I mean, there's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. A lot of work out there. But I just, it, I wasn't as passionate about it as I thought. And I know there are probably people who hear this and are like, oh, well, we're not going to hire this guy to be our keynote speaker. I mean, give me a call. Maybe I can still serve you. Who knows? But if you're hearing this and getting discouraged, that's okay. That, that is a-okay. Uh, because we probably weren't meant to work with each other anyway. And I'm okay with that. But then I realized, and I'm talking on it right now. Oh, by the way, I got a brand new microphone for this too. So uh, that's what I'm talking on right now. The CAD Audio E100SX. Really cool condenser mic. I've stepped away from dynamic mics. And so for the nerdy folks who are in podcasting, you know what I'm talking about. This still isn't the dream mic. Shh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, I was talking to the microphone. But it is one step towards the, the dream microphone, which is the Neumann TLM-103. It's the same microphone that Howard Stern uses. I got to play with it back in March. Okay, that's side point. Not important. What have I been up to? Well, there was an incident that happened the other... This is like a month ago. Um, a drunk guy got in the car. It was only like 10 o'clock at night, and there was a woman with him, and he just seemed off. You know, I, I had to go find him, even though he said he was coming towards me. I found him. They got in the car, he and the woman. The woman was very grateful. Turns out she had lost her phone. And so this is driving for a lift, and, uh, and so, yeah, they're in the car. And... The address, the destination keeps changing right there before my eyes. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? Uh, so I'm, I'm getting a little nervous here because something happened in Fort Worth a month prior to that and it in uh, a driver's life. And so I was already getting a little nervous here, kind of undoing my seatbelt, getting ready to respond <laughs> for my life. Uh, so it turns out he's, he's trying now to get me to follow his phone. He's, he's following basically a phone on his uh, map. And I'm supposed to follow the arrow on the map. And so he wants me to look down to my right at his hand where he's holding his phone and just drive. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't do that. I need an address. So the woman says, let's just go home. We can get the phone tomorrow. It's not ideal, but that's the best thing to do. We're not, we're drunk. 
We don't know who this guy is. And we're going somewhere we don't know in the dark by ourselves? Are you kidding? That's not a good idea. Let's just go home, get some rest, and then we'll reach out to this guy tomorrow. Because apparently they're already in connection with this guy. So we plug in the original address. We get maybe three or four blocks. And the man gets mad at the woman and just yells at her and says, shut the F up. Shut the F up. You need to just do what I tell you. And he undoes his seatbelt and gets on top of her and he's yelling at her. Now she yells back at him. He gets back in his seat. But now he's still laying into her and yelling at her. And she again yells at him to stop. And he doesn't. And now he's like getting very aggressive. So I pull over. I undo my seatbelt. I put the car in park. I turn around because now he's sitting all prim and proper in his seat in the back. And I look only at him. And I say to him, one of you needs to get out of this car right now. And I expected him to apologize, sober up, something. But I also was ready for the worst. And instead of him apologizing, he tells me to mind my own business. Not one of us is getting out. We're all getting out of the car. And I'm like, no, you're getting out of the car. And then I yell at him to get out, trying to do a vocal command. He escalates that, gets in my face. I almost punch him. And I realize what he's trying to do is get me to throw the first punch because then he thinks in his head he's justified in doing whatever comes next. And, and so I don't give him the satisfaction. He sits back in his chair. She's apologizing. He's trying to tell me she's his sister. I don't know, but I just know he was on top of her, aggressive, very violent in my eyes, in my ears, and I need him out of the car. And so I record a little bit of this and he attempts, I kid you not to pick his nose and put it in my mouth. And I nearly break his finger in the process. He tries to throw a punch. He misses. He eventually gets out of the car. I cancel the ride. Off I go. I report him, of course. Um, looking back, what I should have done was call the police on him, but I, I know police response time is very horrible. Plus, there was a traffic jam, so uh, they weren't getting to me anytime soon, especially for where we were. Um, so all that to say, <laughs> that was an aha moment of 1,600 rides. I've got the one ride that made me go, oh, no, I'm about to get into a fight. This may not be worth it. And so I started looking at what is going to replace this. I mean, I'll still do this for now, but I need it to be safer. I need it to be more lucrative. And, um, yeah, again, I ultimately want the geographic freedom and the time freedom. So. The cool thing about Uber and Lyft is I could do it almost anywhere and drive for as many hours as I want, but I'm bound to that car. <laughs> like I go on vacation, the car's got to come with me. I got to ride and drive during vacation. And that, that isn't the time freedom I'm looking for. So then I realize I've got this microphone. I've done some auditions for, uh, for voiceover projects. I've done voiceover projects for fellow podcasters in the past to do like 30 second ad spots for their shows, intros for their shows, you know, those kinds of things. And I've done ad spots for my own show. In fact, you'll probably hear one. So then I thought, well, why don't I get on Upwork and let me just audition for a bunch. And it's kind of a pay to play platform because you got to buy credits. And then, so Upwork, you make a good amount of money off of freelance workers. I'll just tell you now the trade-off because they, they take like 10% of whatever's paid by the client. Plus, you know, to even audition for stuff, I've got to, I got to buy credits and use credits to audition for different projects. And it, it, they make some money, <laughs> not going to lie. However, uh, I found some gigs off of that and I've been building momentum. And for the first time in the last two to three months, let's see, no, February, I started this in February, um, kind of lightly, but I've really gotten into it in the last two months, if that. And I've gotten some gigs. I've been on some YouTube channels doing some narration for some faceless YouTube channels. I've, edit, I've, I've uh, recorded and produced two audiobooks for uh, an author. I'm out there. And now I'm tracking how much I'm earning per day, per week, that kind of thing. And I'm following a few voiceover artists to learn how they do it. And it's become the exit plan. You know, I get to do work every day. I get to stay productive and creative. And the more I get gigs that are paying gigs, the less work I have to do with the rideshare. So 
We found an exit strategy for now. I don't have to go into corporate life just yet. We have everything covered that we need. But now we're building this podcast, not podcast uh, business, voiceover artist business. And it turns out there are people who know people who do this. And it turns out there's a lot of work out there. You just got to find your way into the right jobs. Lots of auditioning, not much different than acting. And so that's what I've been up to. So the time that I would normally put into producing the show uh, every day, uh, as far as social media posts, episodes, and so on, try to build a community, I've been searching for auditions and putting my voice out there. So I'm on ACX, which is the Audible uh, site where voiceover artists go to audition for audiobooks. And then I'm on Upwork right now, and I'm in the process of creating my website as well as getting on Fiverr. So lots of marketing. I probably spend maybe two to three hours a day in marketing and then two to three hours in actual production. That's where I actually make the money doing voiceover. And then I switch gears and I go do ride share for the rest of the night. And that's my life. Um, so with that, uh, the podcast, which has been a passion project since 2015, has taken a little bit of a back burner. And what I've decided to do and why I'm doing this episode right now, all this to say, I'm going to take the summer off, guys. I hope you're okay with that. So I'm not going to produce anything for July or August, but I'll be back. As the great Terminator once said, I'll be back. So the show is coming back. Um, what I'm looking to do is get more and more gigs. So I drive less and less that will free up time to be at home and, and I can have a day dedicated to doing podcast work. So all the social media stuff, the engagement, the episodes, and, and you know, with that, I'm not really taking on new guests. So I've been getting a lot of requests for people who want to publicize a book, their coaching program, their story, all good things. But because of where I am right now, I don't have the bandwidth and uh, I already have enough guests recorded for the rest of the year, guys. Uh, so if you're listening to this, like, oh, I'm going to be a guest on his show. You're going to have to wait because I'm not taking any new guests until 2025. And, and the platform is changing a little bit. You know, it's going to be more of me sharing me, uh, my insights. I think the next episode I want to record is kind of a practice run of me doing the officiating of my son's upcoming wedding. What? Yeah, I've got a son old enough to get married, guys. And he and his fiance have asked me to officiate the wedding. So a pastor friend of mine is going to ordain me. I'm just doing that one wedding. Maybe my daughter's if she asks. That's it, guys. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not a wedding guy you know, for hire. That's just uh, a two-time deal for specifically my family and, and those two family members particularly. So if you got excited, I'm like, oh, I'm going to hire Jerry to do my wedding. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm not, I'm not for hire. <laughs> that's, uh, that's just my decision there on that. Uh, and if you choose, you don't like me anyway, and you didn't want to use me for your wedding, that that's a choice too. It's okay. Uh, so Anyway, that's where I am. That was 20 some odd minutes of me just sharing with you why you haven't heard a new episode in the last couple of weeks and you're not going to hear one until maybe mid August. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I'm up to guys. Now I'd love to hear from you. I'm still going to try to get the email. Oh, that's the other thing. My email newsletter as well. Um, haven't been getting that out for the past couple of weeks because it's just been so busy. Uh, but I'll, I'll get some, some emails lined up and have those scheduled and, and stay in touch with you in that way and, and still share more of me with you, but inspiration. I want to, I want to inspire you, but I also want to be inspired by you. And, and you know, if you've got a story, you want to email it to me, please do. It's info at beyond the rut.com. And I'd love to have a conversation with you by email. And then maybe we can schedule something for like a 15 minute virtual coffee. All good things. All good things. As my friend Spencer would say now with all that said, um, yeah, go back, listen to some past episodes of the show and, uh, you know, stay in touch with me. I just gave you my email address. Uh, if you want, uh, I've got a free tool on how to set goals and achieve them called measure it to make it just go to beyond the rut.com slash goals. And what else? If you haven't read my book beyond the rut, create a life worth living in your faith, family, and career. It's available on Kindle for like 99 cents. And if you prefer paperback, it's on there for like 11 99. So quick read. If you're taking a flight somewhere, just jump on the plane, get a copy of that book, read it on the plane. You'll be done by the time you land. Uh, but hopefully not just done with the book, 
but you'll be applying it to yourself and, and writing out your life plan. What does success look like in your faith life, your family life, your fitness levels, finances, that future person you want to become? So go grab a copy. It's on Amazon, but it's also on Barnes & Noble and anywhere else you can order books online. So there you have it. Uh, if you want show notes for this, I don't even know if I'm going to do show notes for this, because how do you write show notes for this other than I'll be back? <laughs> I don't even know what to title this episode. So whatever it wound up being by the time I publish, that's that took some time to think about. Uh, but I'm glad you hung out with me for these 20 some odd minutes. Again, feel free to reach out either on social media, Facebook, LinkedIn. Uh, have a chat with me. Send me an email, info at beyondtherut.com. And if I wind up doing, I don't know, I'm, I'm probably not going to do show notes on this one. This might be the lazy episode. But I wanted to say hi to you guys and share with you what's happening with me. I'd love to hear what's happening with you. And until then, go live life beyond the rut. Take care.